Fry a chicken in water, and you won't fry it any other way ever. The trick with water will make it crispy and juicy. It's hard to believe, but if you put chicken directly into oil, it often turns dry and rubbery. And on top of that, while frying, you have everything around the pot or pan splashed with grease. There's a better way to fry it. Use some water, and you won't have any more mess. You will see how it makes the crispiest chicken ever, thanks to a bit of water. Yes, just plain water. Get one kilo of chicken wings. Cut off the tips. We will use the wings drumsticks only. Prepare your favorite seasonings for the chicken that you like, such as salt, bell pepper, paprika, turmeric, or curry. Add them to the chicken and mix. Sprinkle the lime over the meat with the spices. In another bowl, scoop one cup of corn flour. Add half a cup of plain flour to it. Put a pinch of salt and mix the ingredients. Set the bowl and a dish of water by the pan. Take a piece of chicken, coat it in flour, thoroughly the whole piece, then dip it briefly in the water. Wait until it drips and put it right into the heated oil. Let's do it again. I will show you this with another piece. It must be thoroughly coated in flour, then dip it very briefly in water, and when it no longer drips water, put it on the heated fat. You will be surprised. The fat will not splash if you do it correctly. See, I hold my hand over the pan and nothing splashes. After a while, the chicken is fried. It looks extremely appetizing, tasty. It is extremely crispy and very juicy. Try this recipe the next time you want to fry chicken drumsticks or wings. You certainly won't regret it. Add egg yolks to Coca-Cola and you definitely won't regret it. It's amazing. Add two egg yolks to a bottle of Coke. You'll see this is an extraordinary trick. Seal the bottle and gently shake it. The Coca-Cola with the yolks will start to change color. Due to the foam and yolks, it will turn a light brown. Before opening it, prepare a blender. There's already some Coke in the blender that I poured out earlier. I have a half liter bottle of Coca-Cola. Carefully unscrew the cap to let the gas escape slowly. Once it's loosened, pour the contents into the blender. Add a large spoonful of soft butter to the Coke and yolks. Close the blender and mix the butter with the Coke and yolks. Then, add one and a half cups of flour. Add a cup of cocoa powder as well. Close the blender again and mix for two minutes. You can use regular cocoa or sweetened cocoa powder. Finally, add a tablespoon of baking powder. Grease a baking pan and dust it with cocoa powder. Pour the Coca-Cola batter into the pan, Preheat the oven to 185 degrees Celsius and bake for 20 minutes. It bakes quickly and always turns out great. After baking, just turn it out onto a plate, slice it, and enjoy. Bon appétit! The spaghetti spoon has a hidden function. It's incredibly useful. You'll be amazed when you find out about it. Next time you cook pasta, make sure to use it. Here's what it's all about. Most of these spoons have a peculiar hole. If your spoon has one too, you've probably wondered what it's for. Obviously, when you're cooking pasta, you can use it to scoop it out. The prongs prevent the pasta from slipping, while the hole allows water to drain. But that's not all. This hole serves another function, one that few people know about. You're about to find out. Spaghetti packaging comes in different sizes. For example, this pasta is in a one kilogram package. When you want to cook spaghetti, you usually eyeball the amount you need. But fortunately, it doesn't have to be that way. Spaghetti recipes typically call for about 125 grams of dry pasta per serving. If you have a kitchen scale, it's easy to weigh out this amount per person. But what if you don't have a scale? That's where this spoon comes in handy. Using this hole, you can measure out the amount of pasta that should be cooked for one person. So just scoop the spaghetti through it and cook exactly the amount that should be. If you're cooking pasta for one person, one serving is enough. If you're cooking for more people, measure out more portions using the spoon. And you're done. Try out this function next time. Check beforehand whether the hole in your spoon also measures out about 125 grams of pasta and let me know in the comments. Delicious chicken fillets in soy sauce. My family asks for them every day, and everyone who tries them asks for more. You need four chicken fillets.
cut them diagonally, all the same way, only on one side. Cut two red onions in half and chop them. Slice two larger tomatoes. Pour two tablespoons of olive oil and half a cup of soy sauce into a large dish. Add a pinch of salt, a bit of pepper, oregano, and basil to taste. Remember that soy sauce is already salty, so you don't need too much salt. Add a tablespoon of brown sugar and squeeze two cloves of garlic through a press. You can add more garlic if you like. Marinate the chicken breasts in the mixture. Soak them on each side. Wrap in foil and let it sit for half an hour. Sprinkle onions on the bottom of a baking dish. Arrange tomato slices on top. Place the chicken fillies on them. Arrange them side by side. Pour the remaining marinade over them. Put it in a preheated oven at 180 degrees for 30 minutes. After this time, take it out and sprinkle the top with grated yellow cheese. Put it back in the oven. Bake until the cheese melts and browns. You can serve the finished dish to guests. It looks amazing and tastes excellent. You can place a single fillet on a plate and savor its original taste. Everyone is surprised by this simple dish and asks for the recipe. Recipe for lazy cabbage rolls from the pan. No rolling required. Their preparation will take only 30 minutes. Melt clarified butter in the pan. Then saute finely chopped onions in it. When they turn golden, add white cabbage cut into pieces. Pour in 100 milliliters of broth. Cover with a lid and simmer for 20 minutes. In a large bowl, prepare 500 grams of minced meat. Add 200 grams of cooked rice and sautéed cabbage with onions to it. Season with salt and pepper to taste. Mix everything thoroughly. Shape small patties in your hands. Press them well with your hands. Melt clarified butter in the pan. Then, fry the meat on each side. When it browns, add 400 milliliters of tomato passata. Add 300 milliliters of broth to the sauce. Season with a tablespoon of oregano, salt and pepper. Cover and simmer for 20 minutes. These prepared cabbage rolls taste divine. They don't require the tedious process of rolling in cabbage. They are a great idea for lunch. My family loves them. This is the best pork chop recipe I have ever tried. It's aromatic and juicy. Cut the meat into pieces, but don't cut all the way through, creating a harmonica-like shape. Transfer it to a baking dish. In a bowl, add a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of black pepper, and herbe de Provence. Mix thoroughly and sprinkle this spice mixture over the meat, making sure to cover every centimeter of the pork chop. Peel two onions and cut them in half, then slice them into strips. Take a piece of bacon and slice it into pieces of similar thickness. Layer each piece of pork chop with onion strips, placing two pieces in each cut. Add the bacon as well, pressing them deep into the cuts to prevent them from fouling out during baking. Prepare up 200 grams of vegetable oil. Add a teaspoon of salt margarine and sweet paprika. Mix everything thoroughly. Apply this marinade using a silicone brush, spreading it evenly over the entire pork chop. The final step is sauerkraut. It's very healthy and prepared this way. It's delicious. Place it around the roast in the baking dish, filling any empty spaces. Bake for 50 minutes in an oven, preheated to 392 degrees Fahrenheit. After this time, your meal for the whole family will be ready for an hour. The sauerkraut will be well seasoned. Pork chops are often dry, but this recipe ensures they are always flavorful and juicy. It's a perfect idea for a family dinner or a larger gathering. The meat literally melts in your mouth.